Unity's advanced 2D lighting system, in conjunction with normal maps and mass maps, make your character pop with gorgeous silhouette lighting and clearly shaded details. Lit environments are more immersive and believable because of the subtle interactions between characters, objects, and the lighting system. 2D lights can be an integral part of the gameplay. For example, you can use them to create a player's flashlight as it illuminates just part of a pitch black corridor, or to show a surveillance camera's cone of vision that the player needs to avoid. Dynamic lighting can dramatically change a level's mood, bring out the details of a cave's torchlit wall, act as light beams coming through the window to illuminate sparkling dust motes, or simply be animated to simulate the day and night cycle. Let's look at the variety of 2D lights you can create and how to customize them. To add a new 2D light, go to Game Object, Light, 2D, and you'll find five types of different light shapes. Starting with Freeform. This kind of light has a polygonal shape that can be edited in a similar way to sprite shape. This is a good tool for efficiently lighting a large part of the environment, such as a lava pool, simulating light shapes such as god rays coming through a ceiling hole, or conforming to the shape of a window where the light is projected. Sprite lighting. This shape allows for the use of any sprite as a light's texture. This comes in handy if you want a particular shape that's impossible to achieve with other light types. Some good examples of possible textures are lens flares, glares, light cookies, light shape projections like disco ball lights, or baby lamps projecting stars against the wall. Parametric lighting. These lights can be shaped like an N-sided polygon. This is a specific type of light that can be used in inorganic or stylized environments. In future Unity versions, these light types will be default shapes inside the freeform light options. Point or spot. The shape of this light can be a circle or a circle sector. This option is good for spotlights or to light specific point with torch fires, candles, car lights, flashlights, volumetric light, and so on. And lastly, global lighting. A global light doesn't have a shape and instead lights all objects on the targeted sorting layers. Only one global light can be used per blend style, which is the method of interaction between light and the sprites, and per sorting layer. Use it first to add a base environment light. Normal maps and mask maps are optional when using 2D lights but they can take your game's visuals to a whole new level if you have the budget, time, and art resources for it. Characters in the environment will have even more details that react to light, making their shapes look more defined and three-dimensional. A normal map well done can make or break the illusion of a sprite being 3D. Every pixel in a normal map stores data about the angles of the main texture. The red, green, and blue, or RGB, channels store angle data for the X, Y, and Z coordinates. Every light that uses a normal map has a direction, and pixels on a texture with a normal map are shaded based on this direction and the direction of the pixel. This works the way it does in real life. If a pixel is facing the light's direction, then it will be lit. And if it's facing away, it receives no light. To paint a normal map, start by learning which colors to use for different angles. First, obtain a normal map palette so you can sample the colors used to represent the surface angles. Angle colors don't need to be 100% accurate. A few degrees won't make a difference. However, be sure to keep the overall shape of the sprite believable. If you use an angle color that doesn't make sense in context, the whole shape will fall apart when lit. Painting normal maps can be tricky initially because it requires good spatial imagination. A great place to start is with something simple like the base planes of the head. This simplified model I'm painting on can be found in the Unity 2D ebook on page 82. When painting a normal map, try to imagine the basic 3D shapes that are parts of your sprite. Then visualize angles of each individual part. If you know the angle, you'll know from which part of the palette sprite to sample the color. Rim lighting is an effect that's used to highlight the contours of a character. It simulates light coming from behind an object and the natural properties of light scattering. This is called the Fresnel effect. In 2D graphics, you can simulate this effect by using an additional texture called Mask Map and a special light called Blend Style. Blend styles determine the way a particular light interacts with sprites in a scene. Light blend styles are located in the 2D renderer asset. Under light blend styles are four options for different blending styles. Leave the first option untouched because it's the default one, and instead work on the second option. Give it a name like rim light or fresnel, whatever works for you. Set the mass texture channel to R. Lights will use the red color of the mass map texture. Lastly, set the blend mode to additive. This will make lights be added on top of existing lighting, increasing the brightness. Fresnel light uses the red channel of the mask map but for the sake of simplicity, let's paint it in black and white. The parts that will reflect the light will be white, and the unreflected parts will be black. The Fresnel effect impacts the edges of objects, so copy the base sprite, paint it black, then highlight the edges white. 
it should start to resemble an object that has a bright light shining behind it. To make the light affect the mask map, change its blend style to the one created earlier. Fresno lights work best with the Use Normal Maps option enabled and with distance set to a low value. This prevents highlighting the other side of the object. 2D lights can also cast shadows onto a scene. For a game object to cast a shadow from a 2D light, add a shadow caster 2D component to the object. The fastest way to make a normal map and mass map for a 2D PSD imported character is by working with a base character.psb file. Complete these steps to add a normal map to an animated character. Duplicate the base character.psb file. Rename the duplicated file by adding a suffix to its name, for example, underscore normal. Open this file in your preferred image editor and paint a normal map onto each layer. Save the file. When a PSB with a normal map is imported into Unity, you'll need to set the texture type to Sprite and go into Advanced Settings to uncheck the sRGB color texture option. A normal map doesn't contain color sRGB data, only angle values. Assign this PSB file as a secondary texture of your base character. To make a mask map, repeat the process, give the duplicated file another suffix, and skip the normal map step. That wraps up part two of four. Stay tuned and hang around if you want to see part three, which is going to be advanced visual effects. Thanks for watching.